This is Into Math 3rd Grade, Lesson 8.1. Identify and extend patterns. I can identify and extend patterns and use patterns to solve problems. Please gather your workbook and a pencil and turn to page 212. You can pause as needed. We will start under Build Understanding, Part 1. Serena has a collection of animal stickers. Each week, she collects the same number of new stickers and then records the total. If the pattern continues, how many stickers will be in her collection in the sixth week? Let's take a look at her chart. She has the total weeks over here in this column and the number of stickers right here. So on week one, she had one sticker. On week two, she had five stickers. Week three, nine, week four, 13 stickers, week five, 17 stickers. Okay, let's take a look at part A. Part A asks, what do you do to one, meaning the number of stickers here, to get to five? So they're asking, what would you need to do to go from one to five? You can pause and write in your answer, come back and check, and you will find that you need to add four to get to five, because one plus four makes five. Let's look at part B. What do you do to five to get nine? And now we're going from five to this nine on the chart. If you wanna try this on your own, you can pause and come back, and you will find that you will add four because five plus four makes nine. Let's take a look at part C. What do you do to nine to get 13, which is our next number. If you'd like to pause, you may. And when you come back, you will find that you add four because nine plus four makes 13. Part D asks, what do you do to 13 to get to 17? So again, if you'd like to pause, you can. And when you come back, again, you'll find to add four because 13 plus four makes 17. Let's take a look at the connective vocabulary. A growing pattern changes by the same amount from one number to the next. So we are noticing our growing pattern to be adding four to each number from one number to the next. And then our next vocabulary uh, word is called a rule. And a rule is an instruction that tells you the correct way to do something. It can be used to describe a growing pattern. Part E, what rule describes the pattern of stickers in the collection? So if we're looking at what we did to each number each week, we saw that we are adding four every time. So this would become our rule. And our rule would be to add four to find the number of stickers for the next week. Part F, how many stickers will be in the collection in the sixth week? How do you know? Again, you are welcome to pause and try this on your own and come back, but what we're going to do is to find that sixth week that's, that they're looking for. Here we are going to just add four to um, find the number of stickers for the next week. So we had 17 for the fifth week, and now we're going to add four, which will give us the answer of 21. So we can answer 21 stickers. We can explain our thinking by writing 17 plus four equals 21, because 17 was the answer for week five, and adding four is our rule. So we know that this will be the amount of stickers for the sixth week. Now let's take a look at the next page, page 213, part two. The downy woodpecker has four toes on each foot. Describe a pattern, then complete the table. So they make a table here for us that shows the woodpecker's feet and the woodpecker's toes. So when the woodpecker has one foot, there will be four toes two feet, there will be eight toes, three feet, there will be 12 toes, four feet, there will be 16 toes, 
and five is missing. We don't have an answer for five. Part A asks us to look across the rows. What pattern can you describe? So if you'd like to pause and really look at this again, you may, or just follow along with me. At the top here, woodpecker feet, I'm noticing that each of these numbers up top is going is increasing by one. So here we have one, two, then we go to three, then we go to four. So I'm just adding one foot every time and I'll get the next number. Now I will look at the toes. I'm noticing that when I go from four toes to eight toes, I need to add four. I'll start with four, five, six, seven, eight. I added four um, toes to get to the next number. And then to go from eight to 12, I would also need to add on, starting at eight, nine, 10, 11, 12. I am adding four more to that number. And from 12 to 16, starting at 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, I've added four again. So I will explain that the number of feet increases by one and the number of toes increases by four. Let's take a look at part B. Now look at the columns. What pattern can you describe? So now they're asking me to look at the columns. So I'm noticing that I have one foot and that gives me four. And then I have two and that gives me eight. And so I'm starting to see a pattern here that if I multiply one times four, I would get four. And if I multiply two, the number of feet by four, if I multiply that by four, I'm going to get eight. Are you seeing the same pattern? Let's take a look at the next column. If we have three and we multiply that by four, we will get 12. And same with this one, four times four makes 16. I can explain my thinking by writing the number of feet multiplied by four equals the number of toes. Part C asks, how can you use your pattern to find how many toes are on five feet? If you'd like to pause and try this on your own, you may, otherwise you can follow along with me. So if I'm looking at my pattern that I found right here that says the number of feet multiplied by four equals the number of toes, then I'm going to take that five and I'm going to multiply it by four. When I do that, I will get 20, which would be my answer. And I can explain my thinking by saying multiply the number of feet by four, which will give the answer of 20 toes. You are always welcome to go back and rewatch this video and pause along the way anytime as needed.